Hey YouTube, what's going on? You're on A-level mechanics, we'll do a revision today and it's all about vertical motion. Alright, so we will set up harder questions and problems, sort of EP levels, P levels and also we will consider challenging questions as well. Alright, so this is vertical motion, that means the motion that goes under the influence of gravity force, right? That's the single force acts on the body, or on, on the particle, or on any projectile that goes upward or downwards, and that means there are no other force like friction, air resistance, and anything else. So that means, according to the second Newton's law, as you remember in physics, there is the only gravity force, and that's going to be the resultant force. So that means we can go through a very useful formula, okay, applicable here, so that you get a bit uh, physics, a uh, bit of you know physics background and physics foundation here, because. If you understand why it's so, it's much easier to apply the formula, but not blindly, all right? So I know the fact that many teachers just uh, give the students lots of lots of formulas, basically a sheer volume of that, and students blindly apply, but the step to the left or step to the right, and it causes the problem because student can do that because it can consider, like he or she consider this sort of problem as a very new one, right? So that's why I'll just, we'll go through quickly and shortly through the physics background. You understand what kinematics here, what sort of SU1 formula, what it can be like, at which case it can be applicable, we should not, okay? And then we go to the problem itself, right? So each problem you can find also in separate videos that I will upload soon, but that's going to be the whole series of videos related to a set of questions, right? If you want just, if you do a revision, it's better to watch all at once through, going through the whole set, all right? Okay, so let's get started. Grab your formula and that's going to be useful footnotes. All right, let's get started. So guys, as you can see, I set up the ground level and the vertical path of any particle or projectile or body that which is thrown from the ground level, I mean from here or from the top, it doesn't matter actually where's the starting point, it can be actu actually the point somewhere uh, at height h, so it doesn't matter actually, so I just can indicate also this stuff, so according to it can be thrown from the height h, from that point and again in different direction upwards or downwards it doesn't matter so the concept still stays the same during during the flight during the flight there is only one single force so let's put a particle here for example let it be a particle and we assume that the gravity force acts downward so that's the gravity force of, of gravity and that's the single force cause basically acceleration according to the second Newton's law. So you can say that resultant force, which is gravity force, which is mg, according to the statement of the second Newton's law will cause acceleration a. So you can cancel by mass and that's why you'll get acceleration equals to g, all right? But this acceleration goes downwards, it's always. So that's why no matter where your particle is moving, downwards or upwards, it still has the same constant acceleration. So it's constant. In many problems, this g is actually can be picked up as 10 meter per second squared. Sometimes the units might be like drawn in this way. So it might be 10 meter, second, and to the power negative two. All right, so that might be the case. But actually more precise value is 9.81 meter per second squared. So depending on the problem, we clearly state that you need to use this value, you need to use the value that you're given. If you are not specified, so just it's better to write assumptions. So we assume that acceleration uh, can be measured up to the nearest hole, so we take in 10, all right? So just make bear this in mind and always write an assumption, okay? When you write exam papers or just answering quiz um, somewhere, in, I mean, at 
at your program at on A level class. All right. So that means uh, we fixed acceleration is not changing, and we can set up uh, the direction where we project all the values. Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, not all the values, but all the vectors. And typically, so we can set up vertically upwards. That's going to be, let's say, y axis. And according to the formula that you're given in your booklets formula, or probably just you'll be given by your teacher. So no matter, in this case, you're going to use two typical formulas. First, the first formula. So I'll just zoom in and zoom out. And we're going to write the following formula that connects velocity, which is initial velocity. In most of the case, you'll be given this value. That's going to be u as the vector. It can be upward or downward, depending on the problem. But this is initial velocity. But the main goal is to present the velocity at given time moment. So that's v. Velocity, velocity at given time instance or time moment instance all right and here is the link that connects v and u so that's going to be v equals u plus at so this is the classical formula okay but because it's it's written in a vector way okay where all v u and a are vectors where a is acceleration uh, it's better to project immediately, right? Because otherwise, there will you'll be confused about signs, which signs to use. Okay, so that's why because your y-axis goes upward, and let's say that initial velocity u is upwards. In this case, we're gonna use the following projection for y-axis. So y-axis. And we project everything on this axis, which is upward. All right, so because initial velocity u is upward, so you can write that u will have the positive sign. While acceleration projected on y-axis, I'll just put it index y, will have negative g value, all right? Because it's negative, right? It goes, it always directed downwards basically against our direction. So that means we will write the following formula. V is going to be equal to u minus gt. In the case, if u upwards. If you said that the initial velocity is going to be downward, downward, in this case, V is going to be, of course, negative because it will have negative value. And due to the fact that both acceleration and initial velocity u are directed downwards. So that's why obviously you expect that uh, over time passing you, your body, your particle will be accelerating even more. Okay, That's why it will gain more and more velocity, which is still downwards. Okay, That means you'll use minus u minus gt. All right. It's, it's due to the fact that you use projection here, all right? If you said that initial velocity or your body released uh, from the rest, it means if it were at the rest or at rest, it means that initial velocity is simply zero, all right? So that means, in this case, you will use the following formula for the final velocity. It's going to be minus g in our case. All right, uh, just um, a little notice about if your y-axis is directed downward. In this case, of course, g, acceleration, is going to be with a positive sign, but it's always better to stick to, you know, to the consistent way that you consistently apply from problem to problem the same uh, direction for y-axis and it's preferable to use uh, the upwards, okay? Anyway, it's a matter of the taste, but I recommend to stick to, you know, consistent approach where 
you apply um, basically where your initial parameters in terms of where you input y-axis is going to be the same okay not variable not changing because otherwise it makes more students confusing about this point all right so we go next and we connect basically final velocity and initial velocity and you can calculate no matter where the body is moving upwards downwards or even it's changing direction because anyway it will be specified by the initial velocity and acceleration freefall okay so that's why the next step here about the formulas is to connect distance travel or displacement all right so displacement is the vector which is again uh, by definition represent uh, the vector directed from initial position to uh, the position at a given time instance so that means in order to describe in order to describe displacement let's say we still apply the same approach we input y-axis here is the ground level and let's say here is initial position initial and that's going to be a final position so final in this case displacement uh, just put a green vector here downwards it will represent the shortest route between initial and the final position because again uh, this is vertical motion so that means this vector will have completely one projection for y-axis only so that's why we need only one direction only one axis and so let's mark this vector as s which represents displacement and the formula that connects displacement with velocity and acceleration and time of course that's the formula that you're given as u v a t so that all right s u v a t okay because it connects all those variables with with displacement so that's why uh, because displacement is a vector obviously you'll expect to have vectors on the right side and the formula is given by the form so ut and a t squared over 2 as you understand displacement from time is a quadratic function quadratic function okay so what's next of course the next step and next logical step is to make a projection on y-axis all right so depending again on uh, what's your initial condition about let's say you uh, you'll have again different options but let's for simplicity we assume that we're given initial velocity vector um, in our case it downwards let it be downwards downwards according to our problem downwards and that means that initial u is directed downward okay so that means it will have it will be directed against y-axis so the projection is going to be negative so that's why s uh, projected on y-axis again y-axis only again tied up to the y-axis that you input it's going to be looking like negative ut because downwards okay and of course acceleration is always downwards so minus gt squared over 2 as you expect have displacement as a vector directed downwards so it should have negative projection because it directed against y-axis so that's the formula in the case it starts from the rest obviously s will be equal to minus gt squared over t okay and vector of displacement is going to be negative when u initial is going to be equal to zero because uh, from the rest it dropped down from rest position it released down from rest position so from from the rest okay maybe it's better to say from rest okay so that's another very useful formula okay so s equals to negative gt squared over 2 and in general case minus ut minus gt squared over 2 if it goes initially if it goes it was going 
upwards with initial velocity u positive with uh, and positive uh, direction of y-axis so that means you'll correct the formula and instead of minus you will put u but I don't recommend to memorize every single formula what you need to remember again is those red ones okay here over t and here like written in the vector way all right so everything everything about this and I also put vectors here indicating that both u and a are vectors and only then when you given a given when you given a given problem yes nonsense all right so in this case only in this case you will project and this problem will specify the signs all right obtained by each vector like u and a okay and one more very useful formula if you express t from here from formula one and put it instead of time in the formula two you'll get obviously formula three maybe is where two goes down and here is going to be the third formula that describe dependency between displacement and how displacement can be figured out through initial velocity and final velocity so here's the formula which will be given by your teachers so over to g and again because here are the squares right and here is the 2g so it's better to say that you will calculate the absolute value of displacement all right because you expect to have that v squared minus u squared uh, of course it might be it might have different signs it might be less right than zero or more than zero so that's why maybe it's better to use this formula uh, to calculate the absolute value of distance and according to the context of the problem you'll see where your initial position where your final position and hence you will figure out direction okay as the vector but in most cases you just need to uh, calculate displacement as it is and that's it all right so those three very useful formulas that you need to remember so this part you can consider as a strong foundation for vertical motion okay uh, also our uh, actually it's already uploaded it was uploaded i think really really long ago and there are also foundation about project emotion if you're a level students from year two all right so that's why you can check this video out and here is uh and hint you can find that all right so that's called physics behind the scene so i hope you got this because all those three formulas are very useful and the main point is that you can project you can make projection on the y-axis that you input if you use this way you will never fail you'll never lose your signs okay for each uh, vector variable like u a and s represent okay so that means i think where's basics and we're ready to go to the next step about because the topic was about vertical motion harder questions so that's right time to make revision all right so that's why it's going to be in the next episode so i hope you like that consider a subscription to my channel like this video and share it to anyone who's still struggling or who making footnotes because that's definitely very useful all right but again i encourage not just blindly have a print screen of that but to understand how it has been done okay and how, how it has been explained and lack of explanation is very hard to apply and solve problems right so that's why just consider again watching this video re-watching sometimes and during of course your vision also do that that was daniel dallas thanks for watching and see you next time